Hi folks, hope you're doing well. Um, so this is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to be doing in introducing um, Quality Center and just the basic functionality of it. Um, the reason behind doing this video is um, that a lot of people go into a new job um, despite having a lot of experience you cannot be expected to know all the tools that are there in the market. Most of the companies nowadays are using open source tools. Um, some have very crude uh, Excel developed uh, templates or um, tools that have been that have been basically um, developed in-house. But HP Quality Center is actually one of those tools that is um, very widely used in, in top tier organizations. So you've landed yourself a good job um, in in as a as a tester, and now um, the company that you've joined is using Quality Center. So um, basically, the, this, the the purpose of this the purpose of this video is to familiarize you um, with how to use it, um, and just give you a brief overview of what the functionality would be. So as a tester, you've been given some requirements, and you have been told um, to actually write test cases for those. Um, in Quality Center. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, Quality Center is a web-based application. It's, uh, it runs in the web browser. Currently it only supports uh, Internet Explorer so you in all probability you won't be able to use it um, in any other browser. It just runs um, in IE which kind of kind of sucks but that's how it is. Uh, so this is the first screen that you actually get um, when you access Quality Center. You'll just have to type in um, the address um, of your or the URL for your local server, um, and this is the screen that you get. Um, you'll just have to log in with the credentials that you will be provided um, by your company. Once you log on, um, um, all the chances are that you're going to see a list of uh, projects or folders in here and I am in the in the testing module so quality center basically has the dashboard requirements testing uh, defects um, I won't be taking a lot of time in discussing what dashboard and requirements are um, they're pretty important and useful functions uh, but most of your time as a tester would be spent uh, within the testing and defects uh, functions or modules within Quality Center. So, um, <clears throat> test plan is actually the area where you would do planning for your test. This is where you're going to be writing test cases, writing test steps, and then um, after you're done, we'll import them in test lab and execute it there. So let's just go ahead um, and imagine we have a we have a project that's ongoing. Um, so the way um, we create projects in Quality Center is uh, we click on the new folder and let's just imagine it's uh, your company categorizes folders by years. So we have a 2013 folder that has all the projects that you're going to be doing in 2013 in this folder. So within this folder, we um, will create um, a subfolder that is that we'll name as release one. So just imagine it's beginning of 2013 and you're working on the first release of 2013. Um, now within this, so these folders are basically just placeholders to categorize um, your test cases uh, for convenience and for uh, ease of documentation, and um, um, so that you could you could easily find them later. Um, so release one, you you added this folder within 2013. Now within this release one, um, you're going to be putting in your test cases. So we'll uh, click on on this icon. Um, if you hover your mouse over it, you're going to see the test, uh, the tooltip that that says new test. So this is basically our first test case. 
um, let me just name it validate basic search functionality works the names uh, should be self-explanatory so that and you should be let me give you another tip uh, when you're creating test cases um, please make sure that you're not creating them for yourself and you'll be you might not be the only one looking at those test cases and executing those um, you might be executing those um, in this release but you don't know um, who would be executing your test cases subsequently in some companies one person writes test cases and others execute them um, so please make sure that you um, write test cases in a manner which is understandable for everyone um, and others should do the same to make it easier for you when you're executing other people's test case so I'll just name it validate basic search functionality works this is just the name of the test case and I'll click OK to create it um, before that my usual uh, practice or, or um, my usual the, the thing that I follow is to write some description for it now you can actually um, type in the description uh, from your business requirements here so that the, the person gets a glance of what the test case does before actually executing it. And it's really really helpful uh, for people um, because they can just look at description here and um, find out what the purpose of this test, test case is. So what I'll do is I'll type in a brief description about it. A test case to verify sorry that basic search functionality works on the home page all right so this is basically we created our first test case um, now the next step is to actually write detailed test case uh, test steps within the test case so for that we'll go into the second tab um, within this newly created test case that is labeled as design steps here you can actually write steps so what I will do is I will click on this new step icon and I receive this uh, pop-up window which says design step details and the step is named as step one by default it gives you a numerical um, step counting uh, starts off with step one and as you add it would inc increment those steps so it would be step one step two and so forth uh, you can actually change this as well I'd um, just keep it uh, the default value for now so the description is the action here that the user is supposed to take the tester is supposed to take for this so I'll and this should basically um, be an instruction so let me just type in navigate to google.com and this section here is the expected result of this step so navigate to google.com the expected result is user should um, land on the google.com homepage so here we go that's the first step within our test case okay, let me go ahead and put in a, a, a few more steps the next step as you see it has automatically given it step 2 as the step name so I'll type in um, type in the term quality in the search bar and the expected result is that user will see results for the searched term quality all right so here we go this is our first test case with two steps in it Alright, so in the previous video, what we did was uh, we just created a basic test case 
within the test plan um, uh, module of Quality Center. Um, we'll move forward and add another test case to our um, release one project. And I'll just call, call um, this test case navigate to bettertesting.net. I'll put in a description. Validate that basic navigation to site is working. So we have uh, another test case in our uh, folder. Let's go ahead and put in a few steps within this test case because without steps, the test case is nothing. Um, so I'll just put in the first step, which I will um, describe as Open Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is running. Now, mind you, these are just test cases that I'm putting in to uh, basically demonstrate how this works. Uh, the test cases that you encounter in your real life um, or in your job might not be as simple. Or they might, you never know. But just consider these examples um, of how we use um, the, the, the test plan um, section of testing within Quality Center. So the, the second step is type in bettertesting.net in the in the address bar. Yeah, address bar kind of skip User should be um, user lands on the home page for bettertesting.net. Right. So now we have two test cases in our test um, in our test plan. So as we discussed, we now have two test cases in our test plan. But these two test cases, or the number of test cases that you have in the test plan. Um, don't serve a, serve a purpose as, as of now. Um, test plan um, is just an area where you'll be creating your test cases and they, it would serve as a, um, as a repository uh, for all the test cases but the actual execution takes place in test lab so in order to execute our two test cases we'll need to go into test lab so our test lab, as you can see uh, at this moment, does not have anything. So consider um, that you're starting off uh, a new year with no projects. You just put in um, 500 test cases in your test plan, and now you um, want to execute them. So um, I'll create a new folder in here in the in the test um, lab, and I'll cl call it 2013 the same way I called our first test case. In, um, in the test plan and within this I am going to add a test set and I will call it uh, validation now again I mean this just serves as an example you will follow the naming conventions um, and uh, and the structure that your company follows and just trying to explain how this works. The exact naming, naming convention and the folder structure uh, would uh, basically be governed by your quality center administrator and your company. So I'll go ahead and create this, uh, this test set um, in um, the test plan. Now you can see that there's a bit of a difference in the visual layout. Um, so this is actually where all, all our tests would um, would eventually 
be imported and um, this is where we will execute them. So now if you remember we had two test cases in the test plane I want to bring them over here in our test lab and execute those. So I will click on this first uh, button which is called select tests and this gives me um, uh, this slides out um, the folder view for our test plan uh, full, uh, test plan section and we can see what we had previously created so I can actually um, click on this release one if I want to bring out or import the entire folder um, in the lab to execute so I will click on here this would basically if there were 500 test cases within this release one folder all of those would come here if you want to individually select tests you would just have to do it by clicking and selecting so for now I'll just import everything um, it will it asks if um, I want to um, add those two tests and I would click on yes and I see those test cases here now since I have them here in the test lab I don't need this anymore I'll just close out and now I'll start my execution so I'll click on the first test and as you can see you can actually like hover your mouse over it and then left click and expand so that it's more readable So I'll click on the first uh, test case here and I'm going to click on run. So this actually brings us to our manual runner where we'll manually execute the test case. Now I'll click on begin run and I see those steps that I put in initially. So the first step here is open Internet Explorer so if Internet Explorer is not already open we'll open it um, let's just assume we open Internet Explorer right now and Internet Explorer is running that's the expected outcome and the actual outcome is Internet Explorer was started and I will pass this test okay so this is basically Internet Explorer um, now let's uh, move on to the second step, which is where did it go? All right, there it is. So the description is type in bettertesting.net in the address bar, which I will do right now. Bettertesting.net and We've landed on kind of slow, but we are on webtesting.com homepage. And the expected outcome was that the user lands on the homepage. And the actual outcome is user lands on the homepage for better testing. .net. And we have passed the test case. Once all the steps are passed, I'll click on and run. And you can see now that our first test has been passed. So let's just quickly recap. What we did was we created a couple of test cases in test plan, imported those or added those to our lab, and then executed the test case. In the next video, we're going to be discussing on creating a defect and linking it to our um, test cases. So stay tuned.